This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the Rangers Assessment right here on SM Media, your exclusive SM Media Rangers podcast. I'm Scott McPice, a pleasure as always to be your host and we're back from a week of a hiatus where I was away and everything's kicked off and there's been some good things, there's been some lots of good things to talk about but we will get uh, dissect everything over the next 40 minutes or so to join me on that. It's a pleasure to welcome as always Scott McKay. Thanks for having me on Scott, it's a bit of a, a weird weekend to be a Rangers supporter. It is, and it's probably one that I don't remember having for a while in terms of I had to ask him, I had to put in Twitter actually. When was the last time both Rangers and Celtic lost in a weekend? And I was told 2018. And these weekends don't happen very often, but I, when we do these podcasts, Scott, I like to always have a bit of time. I don't like going on and doing a podcast straight away after a game because I think you're kind of you're wrapped up in the emotion of the game. I think if you give yourself a bit of time, even watch the game back, have a kind of 12 hours, whatever it is, just to, to dissect it. I think you've got a lot more of a, a clear mindset. And I think that's kind of where I'm at with this. If you had asked me to, to talk about this game 24 hours ago, I'd have, I'd have said Rangers were shocking. Rangers, it was a, a terrible performance. that They bottled it. Now, watching the game back, watching the result today at Tynecastle, it's kind of nothing ventured, nothing gained. And that's kind of where I'm at. I definitely... Definitely. Um, we're, near for, we're one more goal forward, that's about it. Um, yesterday's performance is just a it's complacency. We've, we've had a, a good run, um, really consistent performances. I, I believe the players are all human. It's really difficult to keep that level up every week. I just didn't expect it, to expect the fault to come at home to Motherwell. And when, the, when this kind of run of games, I remember I, I have a lot of conversations with with kind of Rangers fans and, and speak to them and a lot of them were, were saying something very interesting they were saying I, I kept I kept asking I says can Rangers win the league and they said after Kilmarnock if they get through Kilmarnock ahead we'll make a decision there and I remember texting a few people I think I text yourself as well can Rangers win the league after Kilmarnock they said that was that this is a team that can win the title and then on Saturday just when Rangers kind of have the have the advantage and can go five points clear it felt as if they would throw it away but I think a lot of people will have the... I mean, we obviously didn't do a podcast for the Hearts and Kilmarnock game, and they were the two games I felt were, were quite important in this run because I don't think a lot of teams this season are going to beat Hearts 5 nothing at home and probably kind of, if, a, if in a better day, it could have been more than that. And then go to Kilmarnock where the pitch was poor, performance wasn't great first half, and then throw in a result. Those are six points that you look at even a year ago, and people said about Michael Beale's team, yeah, they weren't that great, but they got results. I think this is a very different feel to a Rangers team. And I, before we talk about Motherwell, I think we have to talk, talk about those two games individually. I thought Hearts, Rangers were excellent, just the way they controlled the game. I thought Diamande just completely stood out. I thought Rudvan was excellent. And that just looked like a, a well-oiled machine that is is finally kind of in Clement's image what he wants a Rangers team to be. And that was my conclusion after Hearts. It was just so fluid and so just the way Rangers were going for Hearts and as I say like one of the things we've argued about a lot is is that Rangers don't score enough goals Rangers were just going for the jugular last Saturday Aye definitely definitely probably best performance of the season to be honest um, really impressed with Mo Diamandi I like Diamandi playing in the 8 instead of the 10 I think that's kind of it, the it result and the, that's came in at my head with, with watching them the last few weeks yesterday wasn't it? I agree the time the Bayer Hearts performance was a really really good performance and it sent out a, sent out a statement didn't it mm-hmm. yeah no absolutely it sent out that statement and obviously kind of watching I didn't watch the game live but I watched the game back before the Celtic game on the Sunday and I remember watching this going if Rangers can keep this up and I know it's difficult with, with rotation and things like that if Rangers can keep putting in performances like that I don't see them being stopped and then you go to Kilmarnock, which I did watch live, and I watched the first half and thought, this is back to August. And it was that kind of really poor performance where nothing seemed to click, everything seemed off, the pitch I know was poor. 
And then the second half, and we spoke a lot about Tavernier and when he comes up in big games, I thought Tom Lawrence as well. I thought your your big players coming up in big moments that you can you can win a league by going to places like Kilmarnock, no playing well and getting a result. Now you can win a league doing that every weekend, but if it's once every kind of three, four weeks, that's what Walter teams thrived on. Do you know what I mean? That's that those were kind of big results. But I left Kilmarnock thinking as well, this is an even better result because they've been one 0 down and this Rangers team six months ago would uh wouldn't have come back for that. So Kilmarnock as well. And you look and in a title race, you've got to look at what's happening on the other side of the city. And you're looking at that and they're six and a half up at half time. You, you can't help as a player no look at that. But then to come out and win that game and we see Tavernier with a free kick and Lawrence and then it just felt that Kilmarnock game that that was another corner turned in a different way. Like I, I, I texted my dad after the Kilmarnock game and said, that's more important. Aye, definitely. Definitely. Um, something before I get right into the Kelly game, but as I've sat on here with you and I've said that if Borna Barisic can come in against Derry United and contribute like that, um, then he's going to leave under a bit of cloud than Ryan Kent and Alfredo Morales. Borna Barisic, I'm um, way on the boat that he should never be in a Rangers jersey again. I'd be playing Robbie Fraser if we need to rotate Redman. Um, I don't want to see Borna. That was ridiculous how that in the lead up with that foul for a goal. The contact that makes him go down in the first place. Um, overall, I think on a performance though, we we dug in second half. Um, but as you say, the big players stood up. I thought Tom Lawrence was absolutely outstanding. Um, drives forward with the ball, gets fouled for the goal. Taft does what Taft does, steps up, fires in a free kick. And then almost, I think Oscar Cortez highlighted his importance as well, Scott, because he's an effective ball carrier and it's something Rangers haven't got in the wings. Yeah. Um, and missing him now, I think he's out for a season for what I've heard. I don't yeah. think you're going to see him again unless we buy him. I think he's maybe been mismanaged minute-wise. I don't know what your thoughts would be on that, but to give somebody that's not had much fit but a run of three or four matches when you're managing at least a Tom Lawrence really well and you're doing, you're doing so good to manage somebody in, in that manner and to have them break down like that on that pitch when we know what that pitch can do is poor. Um, but ultimately, it comes for a quick throw for Cyril Dessers. Cortez drives the ball into the box. Goes to Dessers. Dessers doesn't take a shot quick enough. It falls back. No, sorry. Obviously, Lawrence takes. Um, Lawrence has got a contribution into a goal as well. But effectively, Dessers doesn't take a shot quick enough. Tries a chop the ball. Ball falls back to Lawrence and Lawrence buries it. And that's the Tom Lawrence that we all know that we can see when he's played and used properly. But my fear is coming in the games ahead with the injuries I've got. We're going to need to use him. Is, can he handle it? Can he body handle the demand? Yeah, and on your on your point, Cortez, I I think it is like if it was better circumstances, he would be managed better. They would he would be able to get more matches in him. But there's really, as you pointed out, and I'm I firmly believe this is that there's nobody else that can do that. Like you saw on Saturday, I think that was one of the reasons Rangers didn't get anything out of the game on Saturday was that Dujon Sterling is as versatile as he is and as reliable a a body as he is. He's not going to be that ball carrier in, in games. I said on here before before I went away. I thought Cortez could turn into a better version of Ryan Kent that could carry the ball and get you numbers because Ryan Kent's biggest thing was it would there was moments you would think Ryan Kent should be playing and well he shouldn't he should be playing for Liverpool but there's times you see why Liverpool didn't want him he doesn't deliver enough numbers and I thought with Cortez you were getting that I thought his finish against Hearts was very very good just the way he took it getting his cell into that space but I think better circumstances you would be able to get more of a rest into him but I think now I think. I think the problem is, and I was speaking about this all day, there's the front four, the first choice front four, you've got Cortez, Cantwell, Seema, Danilo, they're all missing. Do you know what I mean? That That's a big, big issue. And I know Seema might be close to coming back and Cantwell. Like, they're two players that are going to be massive. And I think Cantwell is beginning to have a bit of a groove. But I thought after Kilmarnock, I thought Rangers were, that was the result where I thought, right, this Rangers team wouldn't do that this time last year. And I, I know people say, oh, but they won at Aberdeen. It's not the same. It's not the same because this is a this is a squad that's getting built right. It's getting do you know what I mean? Clement's rotating a lot. Is the rotation right? Again, that's something that clearly with a bigger squad that Clement will do, but it just doesn't have the resources to do that at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Like he's playing players out of position. He's he's having to play Diamande in a ten because there literally is no one else. You can't if you play Tom Lawrence three games a week. Then now it's only a matter of time before he gets 
up. So it's using his minutes well. And on to the point of Borna now. I, I didn't. I did want to come on here and be as born as as non critical of Borna as I could be because I think I've made a podcast out of it the past year. I think Borna Barisic has been the top product in this pod, but I was of the opinion when Ridvan started hitting form kind of around about New Year time that Ridvan plays unless he's not fit because he's bringing something different. People are saying about his height, and I, I've maybe been guilty over the past. I see it as a complete non-factor. I think it's. I, I think we saw it at the weekend as well. John Suter can get caught in height many times, but a weird player. It, it doesn't matter for me. Red Van was just so much, so, such a different player to Barisic, and a, such a more effective player than than Barisic. Barisic done that two years ago for me. Barisic did that against Celtic two years ago with Leila Bad. I, I don't. What Borna Barisic did against Clermont didn't surprise me. What I did like, though, was is that Clermont almost immediately was like, I'm getting rid of him. If it was up to me, I would have taken him off there and then. Clermont gave him to half time, and you saw the difference Red Van made when he came on. That's enough. That's enough. Borna, people talk about new contracts for Borna Barisic. Can't do it anymore. I was of the opinion that should have been... People are saying about a red van should be sold. For me, it was always Borna. Get bought, get cash in, cash in for Borna, whatever it is. He needs to go. And and the, the simple reason for me is is that what else can he achieve at the club? Do you know what I mean? What can Borna Barisic be part of a new look Rangers side? I said that in the summer. Do you know what I mean? There was a lot of money spent in red van. I was thinking they might need they might need a new left back in. Borna Barisic isn't the answer. And I think that was the wrong game to put him in. And I think Clermont, to his credit, got that. And almost immediately at half time, he was like, "Right, Red Van's going on." And you've seen the difference Red Van makes. And for me, I think the manager's mind made up. Red Van plays unless he's injured. Aye, definitely, definitely. Borna Barisic for me should have been sold in the summer. Um, he's no your kind of, he's not as consistent, and he's not got the same mentality as at least your Taverniers and Connor Goldson, no. which we could probably do a pod on the off season. Of how you maybe start to think about life after Tavern Goldson. I'm not sure how what what how, what what the longevity is in those two guys either. Um, in terms of Borna, Borna should never have been kept this season as a as a reliable option at left back. But left back area has been far too weak all season. To be brutally honest with you, and the only reason we're not saying that anymore is because Red fans improved so much. So a quick question, Scott: Would you sign Cortez on what you've seen? Yeah, hundred percent. Right. I just I just take a deal now and spend the money on him. I I'm under the impression that's what's ha- that's what's happening. I think there is an obligation. Like I'm, I thought it was just an option. I think there's an obligation. Again, I might be wrong. Somebody can correct me if I am. But I I think I, I think I've seen enough, and I think I've seen enough because, and this is again, and I don't want to keep making this about off what Michael Beale and things like that. Anybody looking at and Motherwell, I thought Motherwell actually deserve a lot of credit for the way they set up on Saturday. To be fair to them, but you look at that. I don't think Ross McCausland's a ball carrier. I don't think Sterling has either. I don't think there's anybody in that kind of midfield five where Cortez was bringing that. And to me, you need that against defences like that. Do you know what I mean? Big, powerful defences who are going to be stifled, be hard to beat, hard to break down. How you can't have a ball carry and how you can set about your summer without the need for one just boggles my mind. Like how he thought he would get, he could play a tight diamond. It still, to my, still will always baffle me. But yeah, no, in evidence, absolutely. And especially when you've had somebody like Ryan Kent who was good at it. You need to replace that. Do you know what I mean? Like that's why I think Rangers were kinda to be Rangers to be in the position they are now is unbelievable to me because they've been so hamstrung in the summer and so hamstrung with injuries, pardon the pun. But they're getting there. They're getting there. And I think obviously I don't think a lot of people would have been saying that in five o'clock on Saturday. But regarding the the Motherwell game, obviously, Motherwell came Mother been a weird side to kind of get a hold of because they've been on a really bad losing streak, but they're they're capable of, of some weird results. You've seen that they've went to Ross County and won five 0 They've they've given Celtic decent games. They've drawn with Celtic a couple of times. They're not a they're, they're not a bad side. They're maybe in a bad position, but they're not a bad side. Mm-hmm. I thought again, Clermont, and I'm not critic- I, I don't like criticizing Clermont because I think he's working wonders with what he's got. I thought his team. I thought almost immediately when I heard Raskin was starting, I was thinking Raskin and Diamande together in that midfield just Disney worked for me. And I just had that feeling at the start of the game. 
Aye, aye, I think I think I agree with that. I'm I'm not Nico Raskin's biggest supporter just now anyway. I struggle to see what he brings to the I team. I don't think he's I, I think he's been real off it this year. Like I just that in this for just January to me. For his time, to be honest with you, Scott, I don't I see it. He was good. He was good I thought he was he, he brought something different saying half of last season, but this season I just I, he's no he's no contributed for me. Like he's not been where I want him to be. I know he's been injured and things like that, but there's just no that. Like Cantwell, you've seen it in flashes. I don't think Cantwell has been great in terms of form all season, but you've seen glimpses. Raskin, I thought his best game was probably Clement's first game, but apart from that, I can't think of many good performances. Maybe I away in Servet, maybe. Aye, aye, I would. I I went to vet, I would say grab the game base coffee night. Yeah. He stepped up as one of your bigger players. In terms of Saturday, don't know if you've seen a pre match press up with Stuart Kettlewell, but Stuart Kettlewell looked like a defeated man before he even went into the game on Saturday. Yeah. His comments were very negative about his chances of his team getting points. And I think he's pulled a rule over where I used to be really honest with you, because see when I see Motherwell set up with a high press, I thought, oh, we're in for something here. Because none of the old thumb sides are good at getting pressed. Seen Hartstein against Celtic today, pressed him high, didn't like it. It's happened all season with both sides. Both defences are rubbish when it comes out for playing out for back. Um, so credit must go to Motherwell for the performance yesterday. I thought they were brilliant. I thought the boy Theo Bear. I thought he may held the ball up. Um, he may bullied Goldson and Suter, which isn't an easy feat. It's not easy to do that in the slightest because that's two of Scotland's best centre backs. Um, Really, really good performance from all of it. I thought their spell was outstanding too. Um, the, boy really really... the boy Miller's good as well. Said that for a while, he's good. Aye, aye. I mean, fair play to Motherwell. Scottish, that bud doesn't get enough credit. Now, Motherwell just essentially came and had a goal yesterday. Yeah. Right? They, they get off with certain things with some refereeing decisions. Don't really want to get into that. But ultimately, well, from, ultimately for me, they were a better team. Right? There's, there's no getting away from it. And for it, I just wish Rangers... If a Rangers to this slip up against Mullerwell yesterday is harder to take than would it would have been away to Kelly, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And I think as well, you mentioned about kind of Mullerwell and Rangers. I thought early on there just seemed to be a real and in terms of like when you've when you've had two kind of big results like you've won five 0 at home to Hearts, the place should be buzzing and then going to Comarland when you've been one down and played poorly and get the result. I just felt there was a real nerve and I don't know what it was, but I, I almost thought immediately right way with the centre backs now we're as well getting into this now obviously because I've seen people saying Goldson had a terrible game I personally thought Suter was I, I didn't think Goldson was brilliant don't get me wrong I thought Suter was horrendous now I was going to ask you about this actually because this is something I've kind of been thinking about recently and I've kind of waited until the right moment to bring this up but I think it needs brought up now I look at old kind of Rangers defences and I know it's difficult comparing the likes of like Quellar and Weir and Baguera and Weir and your kind mm-hmm. of best kind of defensive partnerships. Very rarely with a with a striker with a good SPL striker score against them. Think about that, right? There's off the top of your head, there's not been many. Mm-hmm. Miofsky's ragdolled the Rangers defence this season. I thought Shanklin's had a pretty good day with the Rangers defence. You've now got Theo Bear, Kyogo, how many times has Kyogo done it? These kind of good SPL strikers are, are having a having a real go and being able to get the better of Rangers defenders. Now, that again could be me overthinking, right? That's but it's been happening too long for me. And I go back to the Ross County game where Eamon Brophy, who had a, who has been really who has always been quite physical up against Connor Goldson, really had him in his pocket, to be honest. And that that to me is a concern that I think Goldson and Suter obviously they've got their part to play, but I, I, it's beginning to concern me just how easy some strikers that even without any type of physical presence can really hurt Rangers defenders. Aye, definitely. 100%. Can I definitely. I can't disagree with that. I preferably would have stuck Balligan in at some point yesterday because I thought Bear had loads and loads of good play against the two centre-halves and I thought at half-time right, does come on needs to see this and make a change here and bring Balligan on because obviously the experience is needed. You've seen Balogun used in different games to good effect for certain threats. Um, and I thought yesterday, considering unless you're going to bring Ben Davies back in against Benfica, I'm assuming we're going to go with Suter and um, Goldson again on Thursday night. I so, yeah. so I thought you would manage Suter's minutes by bringing Balogun in. That was part of that would make that would 
or maybe sensible rotation. And I think it, I think the thing as well is Sue and Goldson recently have been pretty good. Well, do you know what I mean? They've been bit oh, they've been brilliant. I just think as well, and it always like even Ross County, and I know the Ross County goal is a fairly weird goal. I just think it's very, very worrying just how like Miofsky, I thought Miof, like Miofsky shouldn't be scoring for where he scored. And I don't I, I think Miofsky's a good player, but I, I think the real lack of I don't know what it is. I I generally don't know how to put my finger on it, but I just think any decent SPL striker is is getting getting a, a fair crack at the whip against these guys and I think that's something that Clermont will need to look at in the summer and you mentioned about Goldson, I think Goldson's obviously in with the bricks and fair enough to him he's, he, do you know what I mean? he's signed a new deal and he's there for, for the long haul but I just think with Suter and Suter's somebody at Hearts and even at the D United and I was speaking to people with the D United when he was coming through and they said John Suter's like, he's he's an old fashioned Scottish defender and reminds you of like, so Wally Mallon things like that, he didn't he yesterday and that mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That that's worrying for me. And whether he's in his wrong side or whatever, I just think that the central defensive position, again, like left back, is just something that needs addressed. Aye, definitely. And I've been saying it from the beginning of the season. I said no sign a centre half was going to cost Michael Peel his job. Why did another centre half in January? Scott McKenna was sitting down there at Nottingham Forest, sitting but pick the splinters at his backside for sitting on the bench. He would have been perfect for yesterday for that physicality. Over Theo Bear. Mm-hmm. Um, and I probably I'd probably put a point out here and say he's a, he's a better defender than Connor Goldson. Probably a wee bit controversial, but I don't think he's far off it. And Goldson's an average defender with really, really good leadership qualities, which is why he plays every week. Yeah. Um centre centre half of defence needs addressed in the summer. And we were even talking about it in a pod like mid midweek, I think it was Friday night, that I said to the boys, is John Suter going to Euros and he Full consensus was yes, because they form they've been in. But then it just shows you that there's almost that kind of tinge of Bob Malcolm in him. That's the thing. That, that, that's the thing. Comparison, but there's that inconsistency in his game at centre half that just you makes always, you... you always think he could have a run of five, six games. He's got, he's got mm-hmm. a bit of the Harry Maguire thing where he can have six or seven games where he looks world class and you're thinking, why does this guy get slagged off? And then you get that one mistake and you, you, you instantly forget about that. Can I run a games and you're thinking, right, that's why he's not elite. But people say it's about his injuries. I just think he's got a brain fart in him. And I think this Rangers team, I think this Rangers defence with the personnel have all are always going to have that until personnel is addressed. They've always Rangers lose the weirdest goals I've ever seen. Like some of the goals Rangers concede, like you look back at the goals, and I seen Butland getting the blame for one of the goals. I'm like, what on earth is that? Like I just don't get that how Butland was getting the blame. Tavernier's Tavernier's got three men. Mark for the I, same goal. I wouldn't blame Butland for a goal, but I would say he could save it because it's, it's at his near post. He could save it, but I I, think I saw a couple of things going about just reading what I was saying. Butland should do better there. Butland has to save that. Butland, Butland's to blame. I'm like, nah, that's the defence. And I, I said that, I put that on the player range as well. I just, my whole thing with, with the Rangers defence is very simple. This is why I worry is this team going to win a league because. They're always like you saw with the goals against Celtic, and I keep going back to that. Rangers were full of confidence going in against Celtic, are two really cheap goals, and I think that's always going to be a problem with this Rangers defence. They can do the good things, but one we mistake and they can just mount up. How many games did we see last season? I just worry with that, but again, I, I don't think any Rangers player in the first half could say they'd pass marks. I thought it was, I just felt there was a real weirdness to the, the performance. 35 minutes, Ross McCausland gets probably kind of drop kick, to be honest, isn't it? It's quite brutal. Now, I think I'm going to talk about referees a lot tonight in, in the two podcasts I'm doing, but the Joseph Cifuentes gets sent off against Indy, and Dujon Sterling gets sent off against Aberdeen. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think bo- I think both get their appeals denied, right? I- Explain to me how that challenge is not worse than those two. It's not. There's no way to explain it, but what I will say is, uh, is that VAR is used for a clear and obvious error, in quotation marks. Um, and that to me yesterday is a clear and obvious error. See, when you watch it in, kinda, in live, live speed, it 
doesn't look as bad as what it is, is being slowed down, being slowed down is it's awful, it's horrendous. McCausland's been half injured. I, I reckon McCausland will be back quick enough after I think he's just done his shin, but for, um, for that to happen, even in the first place, it shouldn't be. This is where I've no longer half a just before I've come on you, Scott, and I said that no, with the managers coming out and saying X, Y, and Z about referees post match, right? These referees have got to have a degree of protection, right? Because it's just a game of football at the end of the day. But also, that needs to work both ways, and they need to have a duty of care to the players in the park, too. Yeah. And that's also not happening just now. So it needs addressed big time. I think at the end of the season, the big wigs at Scottish football need to try and get some sort of brain cell between them all and figure out a way forward. Because I'm of a firm belief that. I heard Derek Johnson say in Super School Bowl two years ago, right, when all these conspiracy theories and all that rubbish comes up, that all balances itself out over the course of a season, right? I fully believe that. But I think when we've got a tool like VAR and it's costing teams like St Johnston and Dundee and all these smaller clubs without any disrespect, budget that they could be doing with in the club to help make improvement at grassroots level and all this type of stuff. And we're not using this tool properly. Do you take it away? Do you know how do you make it better? I think there needs to be a massive, massive overhaul of this because it's not happening. And it's not just happened in old thumb games this season either. There's been incidents in other matches where they've come out and apologised to the likes of your Sid Murn and all this kind of stuff. It's not working. It's not working. And I don't know whether it's the people operating it or whether it's something to do with the software itself. But I mean, you've seen a, a decision against one of the decisions against Celtic today. It took about three minutes. Or Shanklin's goal to get ruled out for offside. Yeah, it's, it's too long. It's not I, long. I, I, you could we could spend a full pod about it. And I, I have another pods, and I, I just I said it the other week, and I, I'm I'm continuing to say it. I just I don't get what the what are they what are they are they thinking this is this is right? I watched the Heart Celtic game, and then I watched Man City Man United today, right? And Heart Celtic. I was just every decision now you can argue did they get them right, did they get them wrong, it doesn't matter. They were taking four minutes and what baffles me is the commentator knows before the referee. You can tell the commentator has said it and the right. referee's still waiting for the decision. If that's a camera delay, fair enough, but I just think it's a nonsense. And um again, I thought the referee and I, I thought the referee on Saturday was atrocious, to be honest. I thought there was seven or eight decisions where I'm watching them going, What on earth? Is that and you you get a feeling now. This is where I I always I always like watching managers and I watched I remember watching Neil Warnock again the Aberdeen game against Rangers. There was a few decisions that he was affronted with and I turned around to the person I was sitting with and I said to them I says he's he's never experienced anything as incompetent as this because that's what it is. It's incompetence. The, these guys are. And I don't think it's the professional, again, that these guys are part-time. I, I don't believe in that. What I do believe in is that I don't think there's much of an organisation. Like, I don't think there's there's any... Like, do you know what I mean? If if I make four or five mistakes one day at a job, I'll probably get a sack. But if these guys are making it every week and then getting cup finals a week, a week later, that's the problem. That's the problem. And I don't think every referee is rubbish, and I certainly don't think they're, they're out to... They're out to do a club or whatever, but I, I just don't think they're good enough. And I am. I've put it down to I've put it down for years, and again, I watch a lot of kind of West of Scotland, Lowland League kind of things, and I, it's the rubbish there. Do you know what I mean? It's not just the the top. It's we're not getting any better. We're not getting the let's say. Do you know what I mean? Like if players players are coming through. It's a bit different. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a, if you've got players coming through, they instantly get at the first team. You, there's no the talent there. To do you know I mean these guys are rubbish at the top, but there's nobody there below them. You think go in, but then I'll give you an example. I watched a West of Scotland game a few weeks ago where the referee did an absolute stinker. Three weeks, three weeks later, he's refereeing a League One game. How do you make that leap? How's that? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, can it just be me that thinks that this is wrong? But again, we could again, and this is something I want to kind of I want to clarify. The referee didn't cost Rangers the game on Saturday. Rangers' performance cost no. the game on Saturday, and I think every Rangers fan will be happy to admit that. But I think. What fans need to do, and I thought Kilmarnock was a good example as well. There's two blatant penalties missed, but Rangers won the game and didn't hear about it. That's where you make the comment, that's where you go on after the game and say, We won that game, but by the way, there's these two penalties that were blatantly missed, 
And again, every week we're continuing to get decisions wrong. Do you know what I mean? If Rangers do it after a after a defeat, it's seen as sour grapes or Celtic's I mean, Brendan Rodgers today just looks like an idiot because he's done it after a defeat. I've no issue with ref with managers go saying about referees. Now, it's a different thing when they're kind of naming them individually and things like that. That's maybe something not, but I I'm of the opinion that if if you feel the referee's wrong, you should be able to call them out. But do it all the time. Do you know what I mean? Because we can do it all the time. Every single game you watch in Scottish football has got some sort of bad refereeing decision. Even the uh, Arbroath against Wraith, four or five incidents during that game on Friday night where I was like, what on earth has he seen there? And they don't have VAR. And we could do this. Like, do you know what I mean? But we'll be talking about this forever because the people at the top are rubbish. But I think it needs. I think it's important that it needs to be addressed when the drumming, when the club's winning. Rangers have won and the refereed a bad game. If I was the Rangers manager, and I'm not saying come on, come on, maybe won't do it or the club don't do it. The club seem to put statements out whenever they get beat about referees. I would do it if you win. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We've won despite this. That's right. where you get your. That's where you, to me you get your. I was of the opinion when the the thing with Wally Collins came out after the old farm, it was it was a bit like sour grapes, and it was. But if Rangers won that game, I would still have said, right, go and put the statement out. Do you know what I mean? That's the time to do it because this does need address because I, I think we're getting, as you say, protection. Ross McCoy, do they think Ross McCoyland is faking that? Like that that's kind of what's going through my head when he's gone off the park. Like, how are they not? I don't think did he get booked? I think he did. I don't know, I couldn't tell you. I think he did time. get booked, but how can you see that and go, that's a booking? That's a dangerous challenge. The guys went off injured. And I just I, I think it's real. Where's the consistency? Where, how can you see the Dujon Sterling tackle, then go to VAR and keep your decision there when you've been told? And this is what VAR's got an issue that you're getting told to overcome that. I just think VAR's a nonsense, and it's not the. I don't think it's the technology. I think it's the the lack of training, and I think the lack of real progression with the referees. So. Again, that's something we can address. But back to the, the football, went to the second half. Fair play to come on again. He sees a problem and he, fi- he tries to fix it. Raskin, I thought, was just a non-event first half. I don't think he had any sort of... Usually, he's pa- if he's if he's not on it, his passing's good. His passing wasn't even on it on, on Saturday. And Lawrence comes in and instantly, I thought Lawrence and Silva kind of were, were, were adding a different directness to the game. And I thought for there, I said, right, that's maybe the change that's been needed because the Amanda went back, Lawrence went up, and you just felt like right, that's the bit more, that's the kind of what's been lacking the first half. Same with Kilmarma. Aye, definitely. I need to agree with that. Um, Silva, it's happy to see him play after left. He's at that, that opportunity, but he's passed the boy, Liam Kelly, he needs to finish up. Yeah. He needs to score. Um, the Amanda, for me, he's needing played for the back, who then who occupies the tens. Another kind of another question in itself, but by by an equal asking, I don't know what this guy offers you going forward, defending. Now, for what I seen, for like kind of the first half, I think that was part of the issue why Theo Bell was getting so much kind of joy against the centre halves. Is they never had Lundstrom in front of him. Lundstrom seemed to be the midfielder that was going further forward. Yeah. Um. Raz Raskin just I don't know. There's not even an air of physicality about him just now. I, I can't. Eat. I can't even put my finger on it with the boy at all. There's got to be a player in there somewhere, otherwise he wouldn't be getting game time. But I would have rather the Ryan Jack started against Will Lundstrom if he was going to play as a sitting midfielder. Um, him and Roof were in a squad. I don't see why he didn't play, but like it was just it was just an off day. Complacency yeah. setting. I'm not going to take this. The pressure got to Rangers because the pressure was on Rangers last Saturday and Wednesday night and they came through. Trumps, but unfortunately, complacency set in for Saturday. As I said, Mother will repair team deserved the result. And fair play to the big guy up front. He's got a few folk watching him now, I would say. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he's he's been catching the eye. But I thought as well, there was a couple of things, obviously. You mentioned the the silver challenge. I thought you should have buried that. Dessers, again, we could go round and round the, the circle when Cyril Dessers. There's times where I thought against Hearts, you're thinking why have we been doubting this guy? Like, just at times you're thinking, like, he's just one step ahead of everybody, but there's times like Saturday where you're thinking, yeah, that's why. And that, you can't get that, there's no that perfect harmony. He's either, he's either all sugar or he's all something else. And that is where we're at with Cyril Dessers. I think Dessers will get 15, 16 goals this season. But I still think there's that real, I don't think 
he's the guy to like he's going to frustrate the hell out of you, and that's just where we were at. We just need to get your step. I think if Roof, if you could rely on Roof to get you, if, if Roof was to play every game, we know he's not. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't even entertain it. You just need somebody. There's a lot of chat times you're thinking, why are you taking so long to take the chances? Why are you going off? So, I mean, time your run. That's what strikers do. It's just that final wee thing that Det just lacks for Dessers, or he would be probably one of the. It would certainly be too good for Rangers. It's just lacking that that one bit of consistency that just that the one that the kind of top strikers have. The, the clip for me that kind of sums it up is the second goal in Kilmarnock the other night, and Cortez is driving out of the fence. They passes the ball into Dessers in space, and Dessers takes two touches and then tries a chop, and the ball. Bobbles off a loose meal, I think it is, and yeah. rolls by Lawrence, who does what Dessers should have done and just finishes it straight away. Yeah. If yeah. Dessers can learn how to take a touch and shoot, we've got some strike on Mahons, but he can't, he's got a, he's got it built built into him that he's got to do this chop constantly. You even seen him one on one way. A mother will defender yesterday, mother will defender caught up with him and took a ball off him because ultimately he's trying to chop inside. And it's cost them instead of just having a look up at goal and having a good shot and making the keeper look. Yeah. Um, for me, it's back to launch Shankland again. You look at him scoring against Celtic again today, scored two. One was offside. Well, some of his play today was, but I was. I, just, I, just I looked up a heat. I looked up a heat map on, and I I looked up a heat map of Dessers yesterday. I do not believe any of this. Any of these comments that came out that Shankland doesn't have full come on type striker because he's he's work out of box. It was outstanding today. Yeah. And that's against one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. No, you know absolutely. I mean? Yeah, absolutely. He's not consistently. Like, Rangers have made a striker that's, that can score against Celtic since I looked it up. Kenny Miller scored against Celtic consistently. They've not had it since. Alfie scored about three or something against them. We've not really had anybody. Roof's shown in patches what he can do. But like we say, he's not consistent. Who I also think, I think Kamar Roof's still one of, one of the best strikers in your league if he plays every week. Um, and for me, it's just Shanklin's sitting there. We could get him in an even better fee in the summer. Teams were interested in Dessers in the winter one day. It was too late to sell him. I would believe just for a straight swap, to be honest with you, Scott. I'd look, be looking to recoup as much money as you can and just bring in your, your season goal scorer that's going to score goals against everybody in the league, not just the wee teams. There's not even a hint of Chris Boyd about, about Lawrence Shanklin. Mm. Banging him in against Rosenberg for Hearts and the qualifiers. At the beginning of the season, he's, he's ready made. He's ready made. In, you need players of that out in your team to get your player trading model going because if Shanklin's scored when you're straight, if Dessers was Denny's job, then everybody else looks brilliant because the build-up play was so good. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. No, I think it's fair. I think I, I kind of think it's that thing as well was that he's working with what he has. Maybe there wasn't enough time to get a deal done. I don't know, but I, I just... I thought immediately when I, when the kind of window shut and there wasn't any chat, I say, I'm thinking Dessers for the full season. I think he'll get numbers. I think he'll get, as I say, 15, 16, I think he's at 12 just now, which I is quite impressive. Do you know what I mean? Like he's, it's impressive numbers for him when you consider... Six or seven assists as well. His uh-huh. chance conversion must be, I think I was speaking to Ben of the Show Kai about this, and I, we were saying like his chance conversion must be one of the lowest in the league. And he was saying it's sitting at like 15, 16%, which is phenomenal for a game, but for a season, it's horrendous. And that's your, that's your problem. Now, Rangers got a penalty... I've seen people saying that this isn't a penalty. I don't know what planet they're on. It's there's three or four fouls in that whole thing for me before it. And again, it's just that thing of people are going to say Rangers Celtic got a ridiculous penalty today that I'll talk about as well later. But Tavernier puts that away again, and you're thinking, right, this is the this is the wee thing. They just needed that. And to be fair to them, the kind of next ten minutes they were trying, but you just felt this is just not going to be the day. And you did you that feeling as soon as the penalty went in, you were like, nah, that doesn't feel right. Aye, aye, I would, I would need to agree. Need to agree. I think if moments in a match go for you, like Silver scores and Rangers get into one up, then they're able to regroup and things like that. But it didn't happen, Mother will be a better team they won. In terms of a penalty, it was a penalty all day, but I think because Silva's flicked up, it looks as if it's took a deflection of a defender, hence why he's got to go to VAR, back to VAR again. They take too long to make make their mind up when it's a clear and obvious error. It's a penalty. It should be one look at him on it and then point the spot. No, taking three minutes to make a decision to tell everybody to go to him on it. Yeah. That's where inconsistencies are lying in this system. Um, 
Tav does, but Tav does, and he stepped up, so I can make penalty to be fair to him. Right. I, if we'd done this podcast this time last night, I would have said Rangers just blew up. Now, looking at it, I think this is actually a really good goal. I think the way, if you if you look at this from a local perspective, it's a brilliant, I mean, Spittle does really well. I mean, he finds Casey, who's kind of sitting at the back post. I think Tab's kind of caught in no man's land. He's got three players to mark. I don't know what the defenders are doing for the, the centre-backs are doing. And again, could Butland save it possibly, but I think it's a good header. I think it's a good bit of play. And you just felt after that, that was, it, was, it just felt like an off day. And again, I just think it is. And it finishes 2-1. The one thing I didn't get, but I understand it, it's frustration. The booze at full time will always frustrate me. I don't get it. I just think it's nonsense. Why is folk booing at full time? But again, that's a missed opportunity. Nobody knew that 24 hours later Celtic would do what they did. But it just felt... I, I thought, oh, you obviously feel a lot different about it because of what's happened the day after, but I don't feel any different about... like. I, I don't feel any different about the way Clement, what Clement's doing. I, I still think this team are, are capable of winning a league. But it was just a, it was just a bad day at the office. That's just the best way to describe it. Aye, aye. And Clement some, kind of summed it up perfectly as well. He was surprised that Hudney came earlier. Yeah, and um, I thought that was interesting, actually. Aye, definitely, because for this squad of players, do you need to remember who were doing in August under Bill for a squad of players yeah. to have 11 wins on a bounce is something... Pretty remarkable, I would say. It's not just good management, but credit where credit's due. But they had a howler yesterday, and that needs to be called out as well. But what's important news is the reaction. Is this going to, are we going to fall into a slump or a bad form? Where we, I'm quite happy that we've not got our league game to 17th of March now because it lets us get this out of our system and our competitions if it is going to become something. Um, so the reaction is going to be massive, and we'll soon find out. I think the, the cup tie away to Hibs is, is a big game. Benfica kind of handles itself, to be honest with you. It's a European tie, it's a one-off game, and can happen. Right, obviously, as we said, the landscape after Saturday was quite grim, but then, obviously, we're recording this on Sunday. After today, where Celtic could beat 2-0 for Hearts, nothing, as I said, I keep saying it, I text it, nothing ventured, nothing gained. That is kind of, I think that'll be the title of the show. Nothing's really changed. Rangers have started, Reggie's saying, they've gained a goal out of this, which I find right. remarkable. It just kind of, it just feels like a nothing weekend now. I mean, both sides have got beat. Nothing's really changed. And as you say, I think it's important. I think one thing we'll we need to address is the, the injuries. Now you're looking at Cortez, who I think is a big miss. And well, I said when I when I heard he was injured, I'm like, that's that's quite a big miss as well. But that's maybe a good thing that we don't, we don't have a league game to look at for the next couple of weeks. Like, Two big games in the Europa Europa League then the Scottish Cup, fair enough. But this is a big couple of weeks just to get bodies back, try and get even if we're hearing Seamus back in training this week and Cantwell's close. I think those are two big players that you need fit for a title race. I just think right now, I think it's I think we've got to take into account is that these injuries just seem to be just pat, getting worse and worse and worse. Now, Clement spoke about it just about the lack of real kind of training and things like that. I think that's something we need to address. Injuries are just, I mean, they've just completely floored the team all season. Aye, definitely. You just need to look at wide areas and it kind of paints the same picture, doesn't it? I would like to see Lovelace coming in. He's got a contract to end the season. I'd like to see him coming in for a wee run the team if there's going to be a, a sort of injury to McCausland. I think that's something that should be happening anyway. I think McCausland needs a wee spell out the team. Mm -hmm. I think he needs managed. Um, I was hoping that Cortez was, would stay fit because then I believe you might have seen Seema through the middle. I think that would have been something quite interesting. Yeah. Um, but now you're just wanting to see my back for left-hand side. I think my Tondo's nearly fit. Mm -hmm. I think he's due back. Canville should be back for hips, I think, if he's going to be fit, that is. And until then, we just need to hope Tom Lawrence can keep playing because he's a wide left option as well as Silver. And Kamar Roof stays fit. You're just, I feel as if you're just constantly papering over the cracks just yeah, now. That, that's that as well. And oh, I think I think that, that is what we're going to see for, for now until the, the summer. It's just going to be kind of whoever's there, just get the get the injections in and just try and get you through this. But again, big game on Thursday, obviously. Tough opposition, Benfica in the, the Europa League. I've always been of the opinion with, with Europe that if you're in a title race, 
Europe isn't a priority, but you don't want to go out, go out and get a doing. I think this team, I don't think Benfica are even the side they were a few years ago. Rangers have got quite a good record against Portuguese sides. I would take a draw right now and just try and go to Ibrox with something. And that, to me, is... If it's... Do you know what I mean? If it, if it needs to be sacrificed for the league, then fair enough. I think this team's capable of getting something in Portugal, though. I definitely. I think domestically, you can sum up by saying we're a game closer now. Yeah. Nothing ventured, nothing game, but we're a game closer. That's it. Um, European tie, Portuguese teams tend to get through a spell where they'll produce the likes of Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes and all these types of big players and they'll have a good run in Europe. It's hard to tell where Benfica are just now because they're about to, they're about to play Porto at half past eight, so I I think they'll begin in quite leggy as it is. I I I would say so. I would say so. Um, but it's hard to tell how we're going to get them in Europe because looking at the results against Toulouse, they won. They really they never done what you would expect them to do mm-hmm. against Toulouse. But you'd expect them to be coming through that tie quite comfortably. I think it was two one. It might have finished on aggregate. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't think it was that close. I, well, sorry, I don't think it was um, what everybody expected. So, I think it's there. But looking at the squad and looking at at least a Scott Wright starting off the left, and sort of being complacent at the back, coming a, coming against something completely different. Do you bring Ben Davies back in? We've seen come on likes using him in Europe, but but he's been a bit of a forgotten man. I don't know, it's really, it's really, really hard to tell. It's a one-half match. I think as long as you come back to Ibrook still in a game, you're, you're only a winner. I think he'll play Borna. Think so? Yeah, I think. And again, I can see, I didn't I see him I didn't see him playing against Komala. I didn't see how that, that like, if, even if Borna was in flying form, I would have said Radvan's a better option for that game. I think Benfica, though, it makes sense because, again, you might be relying on a lot of cross balls. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what the... I haven't, been thinking, I, I haven't watched a lot of Benfica, to be honest, but I know a lot of the play goes through Rafa Silva, who's a kind of false nine kind of thing, who'll get goals. Mm. I don't, I, th- I think Borna, I think Borna's fine for that, to be honest. It might be interesting, Davis, I, th- I don't know how it will work, but again, I'm I'm more focused on Hibs and then Dundee next Aye. week, to be honest. I am. And I'll take it seriously, I'll look at, obviously, you won't wait just to get some of the game, of course you do, but if you were to tell me uh, you'll, you'll beat Habs, beat Dundee, but you'll go to Benfica, I would take that in a heartbeat. I like that's, that's that's mm-hmm. just where I'm at because I think this is this weekend's a bit of a kind of test of right, you've got away with one. I know Celtic are I think there's problems brewing there and in, in terms of the kind of results and things like that and just overall kind of structure at the club, but I still think I would just say with Celtic at the moment, I think the next Old Farm game is so massive. And if Rangers can get to that ahead, it's a different feel for them getting into that game. I just think it's a it's a very interesting dynamic. So I'll take I'll I'll see if Rangers can get through the next month, touch wood without any injuries. And again, I am quite a pessimist. I think the I think if they the further you go in Europe, I think it does tamp, dampen your your league plans. I don't, I'm not going to be overly bothered if Rangers don't get through. I don't want them to get humiliated, but if Rangers don't get through, I'm not really bothered. Nah, near my that's that's, that's if, I, I think if we weren't in this position in the league, my outlook would maybe be a wee bit different, but I just want to get a tight over line now. Yeah, and I think, again, this is the kind of, the, the thing of the weekend is, is that this has been a, a kind of escape of, right, no really lost anything, actually gained coming out in the weekend, even though you've lost at home. And that's kind of where we're at. And I think as well, Benfica can take care of itself and it's moving on to Hibs. But we're, we're going to wrap up the final prediction, Scott, for Benfica before we wrap up the show. Uh, Benfica, I'm going to go 2-1 defeat. 2-1 defeat. I'll go 1-1. I think we just could get something out of the game. And we will be back next week. We will take a look at Benfica and we'll also take a look at Hibs away in the Scottish Cup. All that's left me to do now is thank my guest, as always, Scott Mackay. It's my pleasure, mate. No, thanks very much for having me on, Scott. It's always good talking for you. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much, folks. And we'll be back with a new episode next week. Thank you.